Now, in Virginia, we do not have pistol registration, although I'm sure that our anti-gun governor-elect, Ralph Northam, would love to put such a uh, law in place. I don't know if it's going to be a legislative focus this year, but he does have a lot on his agenda. And here to talk about it, the Legislative Affairs Director for the Virginia Shooting Sports Association, Dave Adams, is with us. Dave, good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, Cam. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. All right. Well, the legislative session is underway. Uh, It started uh, today, and we do know now Republicans are going to narrowly control uh, the House of Delegates, 51-49. They are also uh, narrowly in charge of the state Senate. So um, that doesn't, again, necessarily translate into a a, a direct uh, pro-gun majority in either of these houses. And we know that Governor-elect Ralph Northam, uh, he said that gun control is it's one of his big items on his to-do list this year. He wasted no time at all, did he? Uh, absolutely. Expanding Medicaid and passing gun control laws. He said those were the two big priorities he has. Even uh, Terry McAuliffe didn't jump into it his first year in office. Um, and his newly elected uh, members of the House of Delegates are just flooding the legislature with pre-filed. And today is the first day of regular filing. Uh, I mean, there are multiple bills on the same subjects from different uh, legislators. All right, and and it really is a laundry list, uh, Dave. It sounds like. I mean, you you had uh, noted this yesterday that uh, one of the bills that has been pre-filed would, in essence, undo Virginia's reciprocity system for concealed carry licenses. Yes, basically go back to uh, what it was when Mark Herring made his uh, edict uh, two years ago. And um, so basically undoing the agreement that was done between the governor uh, and the Republicans in the House of Delegates and the state Senate. And there were some Democrats who voted for that bill as well. Um, okay, so I, you've got you've got attempts to, again, roll back uh, the uh, right to care uh, reciprocity, yeah, attempts to uh, roll back. Uh, our ability to purchase firearms without being rationed by the government, right? Because there are attempts to bring back one gun a month in Virginia? That's correct. There, there again, would take it back to what it was before it was repealed. So uh, individuals who have concealed carry permits would be allowed to purchase more than one handgun a month. But, um, yeah, they want to roll things back. Um, and they're... Gun owners have to really be thankful that they did not take a majority in the House of Delegates because I could see uh, some of these bills getting out of the House and then having to be stopped in the state Senate. There uh, has, notwithstanding what Ralph Northam said yesterday about bipartisan support for things like mm-hmm. so called universal background checks, every one of the bills are sponsored by uh, anti rights legislators. And there's no co-sponsors on these bills that support the right to keep and bear arms. Uh, so much for uh, bipartisan, quote unquote, common sense legislation. I mean, look, and we know, Dave, I mean, those are just code words for gun control uh, uh, bills. Um, but, you know, you bring up uh, the, quote unquote, universal background check uh, legislation. Is this something that Ralph Northam has specifically talked about? He did during the campaign. He uh, did say that he was that believed that every firearm purchase, whether it be a private sale or at a gun show uh, through uh, private individuals, uh, needed to go through a background check. So that's that's right there on the laundry list of what uh, Bloomberg and the anti-gun folks want to impose on Virginians. Uh, so that's nothing new. Um, and he is pushing that as his. I think he's probably mentioned that yesterday because a lot of people think that would be an easy lift were you to have an anti-gun legislature in place. Okay. Um, so what's your message right now, Dave, to uh, gun owners as the uh, session is underway? I mean, this is a pretty short session, so we've got to be paying real close attention to what's going on here over the next few weeks. Absolutely. Bills will move quickly. Now, in the House, they are just beginning to assign them to committees <clears throat> because of the um, uh, question about who was going to control the House, they did not make any committee assignments as these bills were being pre-filed. So they will start that process of assigning to to committees. The firearm-related bills will most likely go to militia and police committee, which is where they've been going for the past 19 years. I recommend that gun owners get in contact with their state legislator, find out who the members are of that committee. They will just be making those appointments today as well and start contacting the committee members because that's where the first contact on legislation happens is in the committee. So if you contact the committee members, let them know that you oppose those bills and that you will be watching 
and making sure that they are standing up for your rights to keep and bear arms. All right. Uh, now, Dave, i got to ask, you know, on the other side of this issue, uh, obviously Ralph Northam is going to veto any pro-gun bill, excuse me, that gets to his desk. Uh, so you need a veto-proof majority. <clears throat> but do you expect to see, and have we seen, uh, pro-gun bills already pre-filed? Uh, and, and, and what do you expect for uh, a pro-gun legislation in Virginia this year? Pro-gun legislation is going to be um, very tough to get through all the way through the process to the governor's signature. There have been a couple of bills introduced. Uh, the one uh, bill has been introduced to codify the Heller amendment at the state level, uh, the Heller decision at the state level. Uh, there is also a bill, this was actually put in by an anti-gun legislator, but I could see it making it through and it being signed by the governor. It has to do with a sales tax exemption on gun safes of $1,000 or less. Uh, I think that's actually probably a pretty good bill that could get support on both sides of the aisle on that. And depending on what the fiscal impact is to the state budget, uh, I could see the governor signing that bill. Do you know, is any uh, lawmaker, have you heard, uh, going to bring back the bill? I know we talked about it last session. If you are a uh, uh, an individual who has taken out an order of protection um, and you've applied for your concealed carry license, during that 45 days while you're waiting you could carry, and you could also uh, then actually apply to the estate for uh, uh, for funding and help with with your concealed carry training costs. I was going through the list of bills yesterday, updating the VSSA website, and I have not seen that bill pre-filed. That doesn't mean that it won't be filed in regular order between now and I believe uh, Friday week. Okay. All right. Well, listen, Dave. Again, I appreciate you coming on the program. Uh, I'm glad to know that. Um, you know, we've got folks like you uh, there at the Capitol keeping an eye on things. It is going to be, I think, a very uh, uh, contentious year for the uh, Second Amendment in Virginia. And again, gun owners, we, we've we got to be engaged. Absolutely. And I will just encourage listeners, again, living in Virginia, go to myvssa.org. And if you're not already a member of VSSA, join. If you are already a member, please renew your membership. The more people we have in the association, the louder our voice is at the General Assembly. Dave Adams, Legislative Affairs Director for the Virginia Shooting Sports Association. Thank you so much, sir, and we'll uh, talk again very soon. All right. Thanks a lot, Cam. All right. Uh, Dave Adams with us here on Cam & Company.